Hey, Cooper here. TV. The first patent for the electronic television, or television as we know it today, was awarded to Philo Farnsworth on August 26, 1930. Although the true inventor of the TV is still debated to this day, it is of no doubt that TV has affected all of our lives. But how? In 1960, the presidential debates were televised for the first time in history. This added a new level of perception to the audience viewing the debate rather than listening. While John F. Kennedy appeared on screen with a dark suit, wide smile, and vivid tan, looking to be, as presidential historian Robert Gilbert described, radiating health, his challenger, Vice President Richard Nixon, appeared pale, listless, with an ill-fitting suit and hastily added pancake makeup. When the radio audience was polled after the debate, most people said that Nixon came out on top. But when the TV watching audience was polled, the majority said Kennedy had beaten Nixon. Bruce Dumont, a nationally syndicated talk show host and the president of the Museum of Broadcast Communications said, I don't think it's overstating the fact that on that date, politics and television changed forever. After that debate, it was not just what you said in the campaign that was important, but how you looked saying it. It is that live performance that historians believe propelled Kennedy to win the famously tight election. So, TV was a strong influence in the 1960 presidential election, and it changed the way that candidates debate to this day. But how does TV affect us? Well, TV has given us access to news, game shows, sports, comedy, and general entertainment whenever we want. Local, national, and worldwide information takes minutes to get to us instead of days or weeks. And because of this, people are more informed about the problems of the world around them. TV, like the automobile and airplane, has made the world a little bit smaller. <laughs> Small world. Small world. Small world is a board game where players race to control all the territory on a map. You take advantage of weak civilizations and other players to increase the size of your own territory. It's a very fun game, but it sounds kind of mean. Pushing people off the face of the earth so you can control it is a rather mean thing to do. Is having a meaner world a trade-off to having a smaller world? Well, to answer this, we need to go back to TV. Back in the 1960s, a man named George Gerbner began research on people to see precisely how TV viewing habits affected people, specifically if it affected their perceptions of the world around them. Separating viewers by light and heavy TV usage, amount of college education, newspaper readers, age, and gender, viewers were then asked about three scenarios. The first question was about the amount of people believed to be employed in law enforcement. The second was asking about the general trustworthiness of the population, and the third asked about the likeliness of the participant being involved in a violent crime in the near future. Heavy TV users in all categories reported higher numbers of police than there actually is, that one can't be too careful when it comes to trusting people, and a generally higher belief that they will be involved in a violent crime in the near future. In the conclusion of this study, Gerbner said, Fear is a universal emotion and easy to exploit. Symbolic violence may be the cheapest way to cultivate it effectively. Raw violence is, in comparison, risky and costly, resorted to when symbolic means fail. Ritualized displays of any violence, such as in crime and disaster news, as well as in mass-produced drama, may cultivate exaggerated assumptions about the extent of threat and danger in the world and lead to demands for protection. The more a person watches TV, the more likely they believe in a mean world. Due to the findings of his research, George Gerbner coined the term mean world syndrome, heavy TV use causing the belief that the world is a more violent and scary place than it may actually be. And with that understood, we look at the effects of TV watching. Gerbner later wrote another piece called Violence and Terror in and by Media, which looks at TV viewing habits 
and how they influence us. As of its writing in 1988, Gerbner asserted, the moderate viewer of prime time sees every week an average of 21 criminals, domestic and foreign, arrayed against an army of 41 public and private law enforcers. There are also 14 doctors, six nurses, six lawyers, and two judges to handle them. An average of 150 acts of violence and about 15 murders entertain us and our children every week, and that does not count cartoons in the news. Those who watch three hours a day, more than half of the people, absorb much more. According to Nielsen, the average amount of TV adults watched in 2016 was over five hours a day. So, with the average amount of television usage time having almost doubled, has our outlook on life changed? According to Hei Yoon Wow, not only does TV affect our perceptions, but different types of programs affect different views. Crime dramas affect the perceived risk of sexual violence, especially to women with high socioeconomic status and no experience with crime. News programs lower this perceived risk. Violent programs make people believe in a higher prevalence of crime and violence in the world, and soap opera viewings increase the belief of rape accusations being false. Lau concludes her research saying, as stated in Cultivation Theory, mean world syndrome is found on heavy TV users. Thus, TV stations should take the responsibility to reduce the amount of sex and violence in shows, and the audiences should control in the time of watching TV. While Lau suggests viewers and stations should limit the amount of violent and suggestive programming to curb this, politicians know exactly how to capitalize off of these kind of fears. Political news site The Conversation cites data drawn from TiVo that the five most commonly watched shows for Donald Trump supporters in 2016 were all crime dramas, while only one of the five for Hillary Clinton supporters were. Donald Trump's speech at the RNC mirrors the viewers' worries of crime, saying, The attacks on our police and the terrorism in our cities threaten our very way of life, even though the FBI shows that violent crime has steadily declined over the last two decades. TV has given people a whole new way to interpret the world. It delivers information, entertainment, joy, and sorrow. The programs we choose to watch in turn give us some presumptions on the way the world operates, but not necessarily how it actually does. While there's nothing wrong with watching TV, we need to remember the events we watch are fictionalized, and the amount of violence we see happening is not representative of the world we live in today. We are more in harmony with our fellow man now than we have ever been in human history. We shouldn't let television make us think otherwise. And as always, Thanks for watching.